Israel and Hezbollah have been trading fire since October 7, but it's feared this escalation could trigger all-out war. The U.S. has called for restraint as Israel vows to retaliate, warning there will be a price to pay. But backed by Iran and with its massive arsenal of missiles, Hezbollah is a far more formidable foe than Hamas in Gaza. A deadly rocket strike that is being blamed on Hezbollah has tragically killed 12 people in Israel's illegally annexed Golan Heights over the weekend. Sparking worries that this escalation will drive to a broader regional war in the Middle East. We've been talking about the possibility of a broader regional war in the Middle East ever since Hamas attacked Israel. Israel retaliated by invading Gaza and killing tens of thousands of people. Now the majority of the victims were in their teens and were playing soccer when this strike occurred. Here are more details about the aftermath of this deadly strike. The children were playing soccer just behind me when the sirens went off. They then try to rush to the shelter. You can see it's pockmarked with shrapnel, but there simply wasn't enough time before that rocket slammed into the pitch. And you see these charred children's bicycles left behind. These paramedics arrived 10 minutes later. The whole scene was truly chaotic. Um, people screaming, searching for their children. We found only dead kids. It was really hard to watch. I've never seen kids like that. And I've seen dead bodies, but not like that. Now the victims of this strike were between the ages of 10 to 20 years old. And the specific neighborhood where the strike happened is known as the village of Majal Shams. Now all of the victims were Druze. This is a minority within Israel. They are Muslim Arabs. And Hezbollah's chief spokesman, Mohammed Afif, told the Associated Press that they vehemently deny carrying out this attack. But National Security Council spokeswoman, Adrian Watson said in a statement on Sunday, quote, this attack was conducted by Lebanese Hezbollah. It was their rocket and launched from an area they control. However, a senior US official who spoke to the Washington Post on condition of anonymity says that the Biden administration believes that the attack was an accident by Hezbollah. Hezbollah says that they've been firing rockets at an Israeli army post in the Golan Heights in response to Israeli airstrikes on villages in southern Lebanon. And so I have some more details in a moment, but I'm really curious what you think about this because you know, it could have been an accident by Hezbollah. Hezbollah typically takes responsibility for the airstrikes that they conduct. And we know that ever since the beginning of this war, there's been you know tit for tat retaliation happening in this area between Israel and Lebanon. Yeah. Tons of nuance here. So, uh, first of all, um, normally Hezbollah takes responsibility, except in this case, there's 12 uh, children and teenagers dead, so they're less likely to take responsibility. I don't really trust uh, the statements of Hezbollah or Israel or America. I just don't trust them at all. None of them have proved to be overly reliable, so it's very hard to tell what happened. Now, we do know the bigger picture for sure. So since the October 7th attacks, Israel and Hezbollah have been exchanging missiles back and forth. And so, you know, in these conflicts, they always try to find who started it, right? Okay, we we can go a thousand times over and over about who started it. There is no question about two things though. Number one, this entire conflict exists because of the illegal occupation that Israel has had of West Bank, Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights. There's no question that is the underlying cause of it. There's no second argument. The idea that it's oh they don't mind the occupation, they just happen to hate Jews or something is insanity. It's stupid, it's meant to, to shift the argument to charges of racism, anti-Semitism, etc. Instead of the obvious underlying giant moral cancer sitting right there, you're occupying millions and millions of people for decade after decade. That's why they're not fans of yours, okay? So that's point one. Point two in terms of what could make this particular round go away is at least Hezbollah has been very clear about it. They they don't want a broader war, there's no question about that. Now Israel says they don't want a broader war, at least in the press today. But in the past, as in like a day before the bombing, Netanyahu had been pushing for a broader war over and over and over again. So one side definitely 
has pushed for a broader war here and the other side has not. Now that doesn't mean Hezbollah is innocent. They've been firing missiles the whole time, okay? So now a slight good news for Israel on this front at least. They've killed a lot less civilians here, especially as a ratio to fighters than they have in Gaza. Where they've killed a little over 90 civilians, but 450 fighters, which is not that bad a ratio. It's bad, every civilian dead is terrible, but their ratio in, in the north is way, way better than it is in Gaza. Uh, Hezbollah also has killed about 21 soldiers and 13 civilians, if I remember right. So that ratio, uh, not as good as the Israelis, by the way, in that case, but also not disastrous. So, but wouldn't you argue that Hezbollah is a more formidable? Uh, Enemy, of course, compared I mean, to Hamas, it is. It is how formidable Hezbollah is. I don't really know because look, they they don't have the jets that Israel does. Israel is going to take out all those tanks and uh, missile banks that you just saw in about ten and a half minutes, and that's going to be that. The real danger is an endless guerrilla warfare. Uh, so the kind that started in Afghanistan and in Iraq. So uh, and and so w where Israel and the U.S. are overconfident is, oh, it doesn't matter. We have jets, we have nukes, we have everything, and we crush these people for centuries on end. There's never going to be any repercussions. But eventually, something always explodes. And in this case, I think the real problem, if you had a bigger war, is the guerrilla warfare that would happen on a scale we've never seen before, including with drones, which are much, much harder to knock down, especially if they're launched from nearby. So the Israel should not be overconfident, your security is at risk if there is a larger war. Your security is, they think, oh my God, if we don't retaliate and bomb the living crap out of every Muslim we see, we're at risk. No, you're at risk for doing that, not because you're doing that. So anyway, one more thing that's important here. So. Hezbollah has said, "Oh, we're just doing this to support Hamas and the Palestinian people in in Gaza. The minute there's a ceasefire, we're definitely going to stop our missiles." Again, you take anything you want with a grain of salt, right? But that is that does match their earlier actions. Okay, so and Hamas has agreed to the ceasefire. Literally, everyone has agreed to the ceasefire. Except Benjamin Netanyahu, Ben Gavir, and Smotrich. So the Israeli government is holding up the ceasefire, which is what caused all of this in the first place. So you t you then assign moral culpability in any way you like, but those are the facts. Now let's talk a little bit about how Israel claims it's going to respond to this. They already have. Luckily, the response hasn't been as devastating as one would expect, especially considering how Israel has conducted itself in the Gaza Strip. So why don't we begin with Naftali Bennett arguing that Hezbollah has now declared war on Israel. We spoke with former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett last hour. He said both Hezbollah and Lebanon have effectively declared war on Israel, and Israel must now respond accordingly. Okay. The state of Lebanon essentially shot a, a rocket made in Iran. We know the name of the guy who shot it. His name is Ali Mahmoud Yichia. Uh, these rockets were made in Iran, Iranian rockets, 50 kilograms uh, of a warhead. And it's time that we hit back. And hit back they did. Now, uh, Israel's security cabinet authorized the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister and the Defense Minister to essentially respond on the manner of and timing. Uh, against Hezbollah, Netanyahu argued that Israel's response would be severe. But luckily, so far, and I hope I don't jinx this, uh, Israel strikes uh, on what the IDF said were Hezbollah weapons uh, caches and infrastructure fell short, according to the Washington Post of the furious response Israeli officials had threatened. Now, who knows, they could continue responding in a far more severe way. Uh, but I do think it's also important to talk about what members of that local community uh, that suffered this strike are saying, including a 72 year old who lived his entire life in Majal. Shams, his name is Fauzi Jabber, and he says, I wish to be finished with this tragedy and this crazy war. The United States must back peace, not the war, and not the Israeli government, which doesn't want peace. Not in Lebanon and in Gaza, but in all the Middle East. And I think that he has a point there. And when I say that, I'm specifically referring to Prime Minister Netanyahu egging on a war with Iran. 
trying to drag the United States military into a war with Iran. And unfortunately, you have American congressmen, including someone you're about to hear from, essentially regurgitating the same talking points that Netanyahu was spewing while he was speaking before a joint session of Congress. So I wanna get to that next because this statement that you're about to hear from Democratic Congressman Josh Gottheimer, again, is very similar to what Netanyahu has been saying. And I think that this is an attempt to manufacture consent for a US invasion into Iran, take a look. I think what this shows us is uh, of Iran and, and its, its continued attack on our allies, but also on democracy in the United States as the Foreign minister recently, one of the foreign ministers recently said of, from Hezbollah, uh, said Israel is merely a tool. The main war, the real war, is with America. The bigger point here is whether you're talking about the Houthis and, and their attack on Israel, but also on the United States, on our uh, on our service members, uh, other Iranian-backed proxies in Iraq and Syria, um, continuing to attack the United States and our service members around the world. Um, what you see here is terror, uh, you know, at its worst. And that's really what Hamas and Hezbollah and all and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and others and the Houthis, that's what this is about. It's an attack, not just on Israel, but an attack on democracy. There are <laughs> incredibly serious claims from Representative Gottheimer, who is part of the Problem Solvers Caucus, <laughs> a caucus that apparently is trying to cause more problems. I wanted to look into the statement that he made about the foreign minister of Hezbollah saying that Israel is just a tool and that the real war is with the United States. He's fear mongering about how, you know, oh, you know, we gotta be careful that this is a threat to our democracy. I looked into it, it wasn't a foreign minister who, who said this, it was actually the head of Hezbollah and I wanna read you verbatim the statement because it was not what Gottheimer is claiming. The quote is, America is entirely responsible for the ongoing war on Gaza and its people and Israel is simply a tool of execution. Okay, yeah, so look, first of all, gee, I wonder why people in that area blame America when we've given Israel $300 billion over the course of uh, you know, its existence. We just gave it $26 billion after we saw them at that point butcher about 37,000, 38,000 people. Gee, I wonder why they're upset at America. No, it probably has nothing to do with us funding their endless slaughter of Muslims in the region. Uh, it, oh, I bet they're just against democracy. What a joke Josh Gottheimer and these clowns are. You think Hezbollah and Hamas gives a damn about Albuquerque? The only thing they care about is stop funding Israel. They're slaughtering us and they're oppressing us and they're occupying us. That's complicated, that's not complicated. You really think this has to do with democracy? Look, Donald Trump actually tried a coup attempt with fake electors. But these clowns in the Democratic establishment now, they, don't, they never even cared about that. I know they didn't care about that, because that's the same clown who was like, Biden's totally fine, who cares if we lose to Trump? Don't care at all, because Josh Gottheimer is a neoconservative Republican anyway. He's a giant corporatist, will do anything that a corporation asks him to do and a donor asks him to do. So he doesn't care about the Democrats losing, he doesn't care about democracy or any of that garbage. But he thinks Israel is super important, more important than America. So we have to make sure that we start wars on behalf of Israel. And what's the talking point lately? Oh, It was Russia before, and by the way, they'll bring Russia back on this too. But now everything is democracy. So all. Of a sudden, Israel having to, they have to occupy Muslims for 50, 60 years. They have to make sure they have no rights and bomb them to oblivion anytime they want. And that's, if they don't have the right to do that, then we don't really have democracy. And these no good Muslims, they're against democracy. Okay, you're a joke. Anybody who believes that is a joke and a propagandist. So I'm, I'm past the old school stuff where these guys would gaslight us. Now they look like comical fools. I don't know, a single real person that doesn't, isn't following politics in politics, lives in Washington, who doesn't think guys like Josh Gottheimer are the most obvious corrupt joke 
of so-called representatives. And they're lazy. I mean, honestly, find a new bit, okay? I, yeah. I just love how threat to democracy is now attached to anything Democrats don't like. Yeah, and by the way, that's why I actually, this is like false charges of racism. If you actually care about racism, false charges of racism are a disaster. Because they make everybody go, oh, I guess it's not a real issue because you're using it for political theater, yeah, right? Yeah, boy who cried wolf. So now when you use democracy for, hey, I gotta kill more Muslims, that's democracy. Well, now when you actually worry about the fake electors, no one believes you. No one believes you because of joker liars like Josh Gottheimer. Okay, so let me continue. He said, "Oh, this is terror at its worst." Really? Okay, let me ask you an interesting question. So 12 kids and and teenagers killed there. Uh and that breaks my heart. I don't really know that it breaks uh Netanyahu's heart or that right-wing government, monstrous government in Israel currently because those are Druze Arabs, and they're illegally occupying uh, Golan Heights. They don't view those people as Israelis, and those people don't definitely don't view themselves as Israelis. They hate Israel, and they didn't want any Israeli officials at the at this uh, burial. They're occupied. They're not Israelis, but they, now all of a sudden Israel cares a lot about them. Now that Netanyahu has a, a, an opportunity to start a much larger war, but okay, for real people, whether you're on Israel's side. Or Palestinian side or any side, you care about those 12 children, right? Good people in Israel care, good people everywhere care about those 12 children. So everybody says, well, Israel's got a right to defend itself because these children have been killed. Interesting, okay, fair. So wait a minute, 15,000 children were killed in Gaza. Likely more. So do the Palestinians have a right to defend themselves? I mean, 12 children dead, obviously you have a right to defend yourself. 15,000 dead, no right to defense? What form can that defense take? Because if the Palestinians do violence, obviously goddamn terrorist, savage Muslims, obvious, we all agree. Uh, then if they go to the UN, they're like, oh, goddamn savage terrorists. Wait a minute, what the hell? We're going to the UN just like Israel did to get a state. You do diplomacy, you try to have reporters and doctors and nurses go to the wall. You remember that a couple of years ago? All executed, shot in the head by IDF, so there is no form of protest by Palestinians that is allowed. There is no right of defense for Palestinians ever, even with words, even with diplomacy. So Israel can kill and bomb endlessly for a right to defense, self-defense. But if any Muslim ever dares try self-defense after slaughter, after slaughter, after slaughter, oh, well, of course, these savages. You don't like it, the racism pours out of every pore of these corrupt politicians in Washington. So they don't care about Muslim lives at all. And now to use these Druze as like your fodder for war, as if you give a damn about them, mm -hmm. please. By the way, currently 81% of the Gaza Strip is declared an evacuation zone. Meaning millions of Palestinians are told to evacuate to just 19% of land in a region that was already incredibly tiny and densely populated. That is what what's going on right now in Gaza, that is what Palestinians are dealing with. Everyone's focused on a million other stories and they have been forgotten for the most part, especially by our media here in America. But I do wanna thank Democracy Now for staying on that topic because I wouldn't know that fact had I not watched their broadcasts on the issue. But Cenk, I guess I'm in the mood to, I guess, provoke or evoke your fury because Gottheimer was outdid by an appearance uh, by Mark Dubowitz, uh, who's the CEO of FDN for Defense of Democracies. He was on Fox. Ha, <laughs> democracy, hilarious. And um, he thinks we all we really need to do is worry about arming Israel more. Take a look. Is Israel capable of fighting a two front war? Well, it's, it's actually a seven front war for Israel right now with Lebanon and Syria, uh, the West Bank, Gaza, uh, the Houthis attacking them from, uh, from Yemen, or Iraqi Shiite militias from Iraq and Iran itself, which attacked them directly on April 13th. So the problem is that the Biden-Harris administration's policy has completely failed. I mean, the policy is, is to ask Israel to stand down. They've put immense pressure on Israel. They're not providing Israel with the munitions that Israel needs to fight a seven front war. And they followed a strategy of, of maximum concern sessions to Tehran, and it's really been a collapse in American power, deterrence, and Israel is now paying the steep price for this. So 
The argument here is, no, 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 a ceasefire is a failed policy, a failed idea. Because we don't have a ceasefire, you have, first of all, you have Hezbollah retaliating against Israel because of the ongoing war in Gaza. Today, Erdogan declared that Turkey is gonna get involved. I don't know if he's bluffing, I don't know how serious he is. But now he's arguing that Turkey wants to defend Palestinians and they're willing to go into Israel. Yeah, by the way, Turkey is the second largest army in NATO. Um, more critical to American security literally than any other military in the world. Larger than the German military, French military, UK military, uh, etc. And they are a bulwark uh, for NATO, a critical part of the pillars of NATO. Should we go to war with them? No, I will guarantee you that if there is the slightest conflict between Turkey and Israel, America will throw the Turkish military away and go, who cares about NATO? Who cares about our stupid defense and Russia and all the things that we've been saying? Those Turks are no good Muslims. We're not gonna keep them. If Israel says to get rid of them, we'll just make NATO smaller. And we'll get rid of the second largest military that's been protecting us against all these threats on the front in the in the first place. You know, we talk about how Israel's the only democracy in the Middle East. First of all, it's obviously not a democracy. They occupy five and a half million people. That's like saying the South back in the day was a democracy. They're like, oh, what? We're, as long as you don't count the slaves, we're a democracy. So the slaves are occupied as the Palestinians are occupied. Does that offend you? Well, the occupation for 57 brutal years, destroying all of Gaza, that offends me. We're equal, we're not anywhere near equal because occupation is a moral cancer and is causing all of these problems. So by the way, to Anna's earlier point, Gaza is the size of Las Vegas. The best estimate I saw is that over 100,000 bombs have been dropped in an area the size of Vegas. Gee, I wonder what's the, what is Gottheimer's words? Terror at its worst. Imagine, imagine if the Palestinians or any Muslim had dropped 100,000 bombs, 2,000 pound bombs, 500 pound bombs, etc. In an equivalent area in Israel, we would have nuked all of Islam. We would have probably killed about a billion people by now. So come, Look guys, the good news is no one believes this crap anymore. That guy is a giant propagandist for Israel, doesn't care about America at all, doesn't care about our allies or any of it, okay? So he's like, of course, you have to rush more money and weapons to Israel. They haven't murdered enough Palestinians in Gaza yet, and they need to occupy for several more decades. And those people, they don't deserve freedom. That's why we destroyed over 80% of their buildings. And they're all homeless and refugees now. Then we need more money, more money, more money to make more Palestinian refugees, more Palestinian deaths. So no one believes you anymore, obvious BS propaganda. You can get Joe Scarborough and you can get every idiot cable news host to bob their heads like idiots. Like, oh yeah, Israel's the victim, Israel's the victim. I don't know anything about occupation, no. Yeah, that's easy, but cable is full of crap and no one believes our garbage anymore. So come to the rest of the country and ask them, hey, who do you think is the aggressors here? Even with all the massive bias against Muslims in America, even now the polling shows, no. No, obviously Israel's the aggressor, obviously. No, gee, 100,000 bombs, the whole place is leveled, 40,000 dead. But you're the victims, you're tiny little David fighting on seven fronts. Oh, we're so, we only have nukes and in the entire US military. And we could kill you at any time, we could kill all of you. And they brag about it all the time. They're like, it's not a genocide. We only killed 40,000 of them. We could have killed them all, don't make us do it. Oh, You guys sound real humanitarian, Israel should get zero dollars. They're not an ally, all they do is drag us into more wars. Now they'd like to drag us into the biggest war the Middle East has ever seen. No thank you, Israel is not an ally. All they've ever done is cause us massive problems in the Middle East. Gotten our kids killed, gotten uh, spent hundreds of billions of dollars. Hey, if you're such a special ally, why don't you give me the 300 billion back? That's something that Republicans and Democrats can agree on. I'm tired of you killing people with our money. But even if you're not tired of that, where's, hey, special ally, where's my goddamn money? Why don't you give me the 300 billion back and then we'll be special allies again? Until then, a giant glass of shut up juice for these propagandists in Congress and media.
Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.